I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of you are watching the Olympics? Oh, quite a lot of you. Good, good. Well, then, uh, you should probably know an athlete by the name of, uh, by the name of Noah Lyle. Do you? Oh, nobody knows you. I heard some saying here. Now, Noah Lyles is a 26-year-old, 100 and 200-meter sprinter and Olympian. And he's believed to be the fastest man on the planet. And he was recently interviewed by a sports reporter and was asked, What is fear? What is fear? And Lyle said, and I quote, I think it's better to say what is bravery because a lot of people say bravery and fear are two sides of the same coin. But when you have bravery, it's not the absence of fear, but the ability to have fear and still go into the unknown, knowing that it's there. End of quote. I think it's better to ask, to say, what is bravery? Because a lot of people say bravery and fear are two sides of the same coin. But when you have bravery, it's not the absence of fear, but the ability to have fear and still go into the unknown, knowing that it's there. End of quote. Being fearful is a part of life. Being fearful is a part of life. We experience fear from time to time. We encounter fear in a variety of ways and in varying degrees. There is a measure of fear in today's Old Testament and Gospel reading. Today's Gospel reading is a shift from Mark, from Mark chapter 6 on which we have been focusing during the past three or so weeks, and now we are, we are at John chapter 6, moving us away from our attention on what it means to live like Jesus to what Christ truly means to all of us as the bread of life. And we will not be looking at Christ as the bread of life today, for, uh, but uh, since we will have other opportunities to do so, but we see that after the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus' disciples went to the Sea of Galilee, got into a boat, and started rowing across to Capernaum. But Jesus wasn't with them. And while they were rowing, the waves became rough, and the winds grew strong, and then suddenly they saw Jesus coming toward them, walking on the water. And understandably, they were petrified so much so that he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. It is I, do not be afraid. In today's first reading, and this morning at the, at the 8 o'clock, uh, the person who read it said it was difficult for them to read, and, and I could understand why. Today's first reading, we see David the wealthy and powerful king with great status with a number of wives. And yet, there were not enough for him. Instead of going out to battle, as was the custom for kings at the time, David remains in Jerusalem. And as that old saying goes, the devil find work for idle hands. And apparently, David was idle. We are told that one late afternoon, he got up from taking his nap and strolling on the roof of the palace when he saw a beautiful woman named Bathsheba. And he inquires of her, he wants her, he takes her, and he gets her pregnant. And on receiving that news, he is worried. He's fearful. He's got a problem on his hand. So what does he do? He takes desperate measures by bringing the, man, the woman's husband, Uriah, home from battle 
with the hope that he would be intimate with his wife and it would not look as if David was the father. Remember, in those days, there were no DNA. However, David's attempt to cover up his actions doesn't work. The man is more interested in his battalion and not wanting to enjoy the pleasures of life while his men were fighting in battle. So having not been able to get Uriah to do what he had hoped, David ordered him to be sent to the most dangerous part of the battle line where he stayed. And this story will continue next week. So I'm sure there's more. But we see David was fearful of being found out by this man as to what he had done. And the disciples in, today, in both stories in today's gospel are afraid too. When the crowd was coming toward them, Jesus tests Philip's faith by putting him on the spot and asked, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? And Philip sees the great need and knows that the amount of money they have to buy food was nowhere close to feeding a large crowd of 5,000 people. And Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, also had, his, had, his, had something to say. Well, we have only five loaves and two fish, but that's only a drop in the bucket for a crowd like this. It's an overwhelming situation, or so the disciples thought. And Jesus already knew what he was going to do. But the disciples didn't know that. And so you find that they are helpless. You find that they're afraid. And having the people sit down, Jesus solves their problem with a miracle which John prefers to call a sign. But even after Jesus sees the crowd, with people having doggy bags to take home after, the disciples are soon afraid again. This time, they're out on the Sea of Galilee, and there's a storm. And they're overwhelmed with the winds and the rough waves. And to top it all off, there's somebody coming towards them on the water, and the person isn't swimming. The person is walking. And they thought that they had seen a bit, as Matthew go- Matthew's Gospel tells us. One minute he's not there, the next minute he is. And the disciples are afraid again. They are afraid when he is in the boat, and they are afraid when he is outside of the boat. But Jesus knows that the disciples needed his presence, and he appears to them. It is I. Do not be afraid. And as soon as Jesus tells the disciples to stop being afraid, they invited him to get into the boat. And immediately they arrive at their destination, although based on the mileage across the lake, they were only about halfway there. It is I. Do not be afraid. And we can identify, we can relate to the people in today's reading because we are so often afraid. Very often we feel that we need to prove ourselves or our self-worth or our capability or our value. We are afraid of all sorts of things that may be happening in our lives. We may be afraid of what is happening in, in our home, among our families, whether it is sickness or it's something else. As we get older, we ask ourselves if we still have much or anything to offer in life because we are afraid of becoming of not much purpose or value. But remember what Jesus said. It is I. Do not be afraid. It is almost as if God is speaking to us about the need to find peace in the midst of the storms we experience. God chooses to come to us when we are fearful. We just need to let Him in. Let Him in. 
God wants to come to us when we are experiencing challenges and difficulties in life and when we are wondering how we are going to overcome them. He wants us to remember that He is there. God desires to come to us when we are afraid that our own self-esteem is gone. Does God always promise to be with us, Emmanuel, God with us? And He comes to us in love and compassion. He comes to us to comfort us and to help us and to give us hope, even when we have done, done wrong, as in the case of King David. And we will eventually see that even though David knew difficulties and setbacks and unanswered prayer and consequences because of what he did, in the end he did not lose sight of who God is or what God does. He does not lose faith in God. And he will recognize his sin and was forgiven. And although a child still dies as a result of his actions, he accepts God's reprimand in faith. And God will reward him, allowing from his lineage the Messiah to come. And that's where so many of us live much of our life, of our time in our lives. We live a lot of our lives in fear, for whatever reason, for whatever may be bothering us. But in the face of our fears and failures, in the face of our challenges and difficulties, in the face of our temptations and transgressions, God comes to us saying, it is I. Do not be afraid. God comes to us and says, have faith in me. For the one who steps out in faith, the one who expects God to act and doesn't rely on their own expectations, is the one who experiences the wonders of God in, our, in, in their life. The one who steps out in faith, the one who expects God to act and doesn't rely on their own expectations, is the one who experiences the wonders of God in their life. God works and continues to work through people, teaching us valuable lessons about living a life of faith in God. So this is what Jesus did. And all through Jesus' life on earth, he stayed firmly rooted in his Father. And he continues to teach us to do the same. My friends, the disciples who witnessed the large crowd being fed with five loaves and pieces, the disciples who, who saw Jesus walking on the water, were fearful and astonished by these events. They did not understand Jesus nor his power even over natural circumstances. They do not understand his purpose or mission on earth. They were like people with little faith. However, Jesus wants us to recognize that miracles or signs do not determine faith. They are determined by faith. And God could perform miracles in the presence of a person who has no faith, and it would mean nothing to them. But to a person of faith, that person can see miracles in the simplest of things, for they have meaning and purpose because of what God does for us. As Paul reminds us in today's second reading, that when we are on, when we have unwavering faith and deep belief and abiding love, we will follow God's will obediently and model Christian values and qualities in our daily lives. That even in times of our fears and our challenges and our struggles, our actions and decisions are to reflect the breadth and length and height and depth. That is the wider picture of the mission for which God has placed us in this world. So when we are fearful, do not let our fears cripple us. When we have messed up or done wrong, do not let those make us depressed or to let others tear us down. Remember, we can still go into the unknown, into the future, in faith, 
knowing that we are loved by God in Christ, who always loved us so that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. For that is who God is. For He says to us, when we are fearful, it is I. Do not be afraid. Amen.